Right. So let's turn our attention now to the origins of uh, complex urban society in uh, Mesoamerica. And um, the uh, first of the cultures that we'd like to look at is uh, the Olmec. The Olmec are, are no, well known uh, primarily for uh, some of the artwork that they produced. Uh, um, massive carved stone heads are, uh, are particular uh, head, um, human, human head sculptures. Um, uh, for example, at La Venta, um, are distinguishing distinguishing characteristics of this uh, of this uh, culture uh, these are uh, indigenous made by the people about the people that are from there um, and uh, it looks as though they may have actually been ancestral people to the later Aztecs the Aztecs are we're going to look at later on in this chapter um, and the Olmec were uh, a culture that existed um, on the Gulf Coast of Mexico uh, from about 1200 BC to about 300 BC. Um, now we uh, we don't have um, uh, a a lot of uh, residential evidence for uh, these communities, but we do have some fairly major ceremonial centers. So we're not quite sure if they were uh, exactly. Uh, urban in nature, but they certainly were expanding in terms of social complexity. So we can't quite yet say that this was a state level society, but it was uh, starting to move in the direction of um, uh, monumental works and some of the characteristics that, like for instance, Gordon Child would uh, highlight in terms of uh, early state formation. Um, and it also appears that this was the same group of people that would later uh, become uh, the the as uh, give birth to the um, Aztec Empire. So uh, beyond that, um, uh, towards the end of that, uh, the the Olmec um, uh, period um, in that area, in. Uh, in also in Mexico, but in the highlands, in the Oaxaca Valley, um, <clears throat> uh, at about 500 to 250 BC, uh, were the Zabo Zabotec uh, um, culture that started to rise. And so once again, this is sort of an overlap. As you have the the uh, decline in the prominence of, of the Olmec, you have the Zapotec who uh, are starting to rise. And uh, it's in slightly different, it's not a coastal area, it's in the Mexican highlands, and it is truly urban. This is probably the first city that we see in, in, uh, in Mesoamerica. Uh, Monte Alban uh, is the, uh, the site that is uh, um, uh, representing the urban nature of the Zapotec. Um, and uh, it has a highly organized structure, a large population, um, and it has some of the features that we're going to see cropping up in, um, in Mesoamerica in later cultures as well. It has a plaza, so a central area with, um, that, that could, you could have public gatherings. That's an important feature in terms of um, uh, the ideology of a state. Um, you also have a palace that's represented um, and uh, a, a ball court. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, sports uh, in in Mesoamerican cultures. Uh, there's been a lot written about archaeologically and anthropologically about sports being a sort of a proxy for uh, battles and conflicts. So instead of fighting your neighbor, you challenge them to some sort of a sport. Uh, this can also be whole cultures. Um, uh, competing with one another on the court. And we see this start, have its origins, at least, um, in the Zapotec uh, site of Monte Alban. And also, it, uh, with this concentration of wealth, power, organization, uh, you also see defensive um, uh, structures, such as a, a defensive wall constructed uh, at the end of the, 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 uh, the life of this site, <clears throat> about 250 BC, uh, presumably for protection uh, from uh, um, uh, 
competitors. <clears throat> and then uh, now we come to uh, another site which is extremely important, uh, also located in Mexican, uh, the Mexican highlands, uh, the site of uh, Teotihuacan. Now we're going to look at Teotihuacan uh, later because this becomes an important site uh, when we um, uh, the when we get to the Aztecs who revered this as a place where the, they the Aztecs called it the place where the gods are made um, so the Aztecs did not build Teotihuacan they come much much later but they are in the same location they rose uh, to prominence um, uh, much later in the same location and were aware of the ruins or at least the continued existence of the the uh the site of teotihuacan and they actually refurbished it and and um and it's possible that aztec uh architectural styles were borrowing influences from teotihuacan which had predated them so even though the aztecs did not build teotihuacan it influenced later uh, aztec architecture and culture because they were aware of it um in uh Teotihuacan uh, is just after the Zapotec um, uh, city of Montalban. Uh, Monte Alban was uh, abandoned, so about a couple hundred years afterwards. And Teotihuacan um, was uh, founded at about 0 or 1 AD um, and uh, was uh, inhabited until about 200 AD. Um, and it was enormous, this site. Uh, it had a population of about 80,000 people, and it covered an area of uh, 20 square kilometers. Which, that's just a huge, huge archaeological site, huge city. Um, and uh, it is complex. There's, uh, th there are, there's evidence for a lot of organization going on. And as, as we've talked about before, organization requires some kind of a social structure, right? You need to... Uh, who are you to tell me that I should go build this pyramid or this temple or this street? Why should I not build my house right here uh, in the middle of this road that you want to put down? Um, you've got to have some sort of cooperation or coercion uh, in terms of uh, social uh, structure. And actually at Teotihuacan, it looks like we've got a little bit of tension between those two things, cooperation and coercion. Some people uh, apparently are trying to, uh, in the city's founding, are trying to establish themselves as rulers, and others aren't so happy about that idea and uh, propose a different type of a structure, uh, social structure, like corporate identity or, or um, community identity. We've seen this uh, um, in a sense at, uh, if you recall our discussion about Harappa, uh, the Harappan culture, where we don't really have a, a, a leader or an elite class or differential access to wealth or palaces, but they still organize themselves very well. So there was some kind of an ideology of the state that existed, even though there doesn't seem to have been a single king or ruler at the top of that so social structure. So at Teotihuacan, it looks like there are competing strategies for how you organize a city, how you organize a state. Some people think I should be in charge and I should be the king, and others are like, no, actually, we're all sort of uh, a community and we can do it ourselves. So, in any case, uh, it the result was uh, a very complex and organized, well organized uh, site. Um, in. Uh, uh, um, in a metropolitan layout. So uh, the city was organized along a central axis, um, roughly north-south, not exactly, but roughly north-south, uh, that uh, is called the um, Avenue of the Dead, and or that we call the Avenue of the Dead. It's about five kilometers or three miles long, um, and things are built on, on either side of this, uh, this north-south axis. Um, the Pyramid of the Sun, um, is uh, along this avenue, and it's uh, the um, uh, a, an extremely large uh, pyramid, uh, 64 meters or 208 feet high, um, and it's built on top of a natural cave. So there must be some sort of a, there must have been some sort of pre-existing idea about some sacredness to this cave. There's also the pyramid of the moon, uh, um, which is. Um, uh, uh, at the end, 
the north end of the avenue. So as you're walking down up uh, down the avenue, that's at the very uh, end of this this avenue. There's also uh, there's a um, a compound uh, called the Q uh, de uh, Dalla, um, which is um, a uh, sort of a public uh, uh, area of, of of a sacred space, um, and in that is the pyramid uh, and temple of the feathered serpent, and this is where uh, we find sacrifices um, of uh, of the uh, dedicated to the military elite. So this is the tension that we're seeing, that although we have uh, some major structures being built, some of them seem to be dedicated to a military elite power base uh, who seems to be wanting to establish themselves as dominating in this culture, and then ones that are more um, uh, communally uh, um, uh, recognized. So things like the Plaza of the Columns uh, is probably a public space. So it seems like we've got competing approaches to the uh, uh, the establishment of this state that we've seen in Mesopotamia, for instance, you have uh, a real top-down and, and Egypt, a real top-down hierarchy, uh, also in China, that you've got a king, a ruler at the top, uh, sometimes they're even divine. Uh, you have that being established here at Teotihuacan, the, or an attempt to establish that. But then also at like Harappa, we've seen in the Indus Valley, you have a more corporate or communal struct, social structure that also resulted in organized uh, urban um, design. And uh, it, so uh, apparently you have competing uh, approaches to this uh, here at Teotihuacan. Um, the ritual structures at Teotihuacan um, <clears throat> uh, are, uh, um, are aligned with these two different strategies as well. So uh, we also see a shift take place in the timeline that um, the, about AD 200, we see that the living space was reconfigured to accommodate, accommodate immigrants. So a different set of people with different social practices and things were brought in uh, and or, or were allowed in. And you have things like apartment complexes uh, that are created. This is this speaks more to the communal sense winning out rather than the top down structures. Um, but then you also, so you also have uh, the temples um, uh, refaced and rebuilt at about AD 400, and it seems to be that there's a shift in power uh, from a central authority top down into kin groups. And so maybe uh, the family structure is winning out over a, uh, a more um, centralized uh, military authority. And this is the, really the tension between the military authority and the kindred uh, lineages that it probably also, also existed, uh, existed alongside of that. Um, and you also have a shift to more standardized paintings. So this is reinforcing um, uh, the, uh, the uh, ideology that is shifting to uh, away from the cult of personality of individual uh, hierarchies that this person's at top and you know this dominating one person over uh, another and it seems to be more of a corporate identity that's expressed in the artwork so the office holders are more important than the individuals who hold those offices um, and uh, we see that uh, the um, at some of the locations, like the Pyramid of the Moon, uh, was uh, this structure was was uh, centered around military um, uh, military exploits, and so we still have the perpetuation of some of these um, uh, these military elite that are trying to hold on to uh, power. You have obsidian work workshops, obsidian's uh, type of volcanic glass that in here was used uh, as a blade uh, embedded into blade, hafted into blades. Um, and you also have uh, at the Pyramid of the Moon, we find atlatl uh, points. So this is uh, projectile points for throwing spears and things. 
and also sacrificial knives and even sacrificial victims, both human and animals that are sacrificed at the Pyramid of the Moon in dedication to this military um, uh, ideology. Um, so that's uh, the site of um, uh, Teotihuacan, and it sort of lays the groundwork for a lot of what we're going to see uh, in the subsequent um, uh, periods, and we'll come back and see those then.